Well, with me now is uh, Dr. Simon Foster, astrophysicist at Imperial College London, and in Oxford, we can uh, speak to John Zanecki, Professor of Space Sciences at the Open University. Um, if I can start with you, uh, John Zanecki, this is a concept mission, isn't it? But do you think it is feasible? Yes, it is feasible. Um, I think we've known for some time that there are no technological showstoppers in sending humans to Mars. There are lots of challenges, as we've heard, and it's a matter of putting together a complex system to minimise the risks. But, but it can be done. I would suggest that the biggest challenge these days is almost the political challenge. Is there the political will to do this? Well, Simon Foster, you were part of the team. When John Seneca says the political will, this is because what the dangers involved for any human being are huge, aren't they? Well, I think it's, yeah, there's obviously the human danger getting there. There's the zero gravity environment and that has a terrible kind of cost on the human body, which is why our kind of craft is going to be spinning. There's also the danger of being hit by solar kind of flares and energetic output from the sun, but obviously it's the cost. You're looking at maybe anywhere between six to ten billion and you know that is obviously what's going to really put people off in this time of austerity and things like that. Can we kind of ever get that kind of cash together? But, but you talk about the, the physical um, risks as well. I mean it, it's not a suicide mission and I mean these people you think practically will be able to come back. Yes, yeah, certainly. I, I, I wouldn't, I don't think it would be kind of moral to send anyone on there if you didn't take some situation where you can mitigate the risk. And obviously when we get there, we would have a ship prepped up. It wouldn't be that you take it. So all that would be ready to bring them back. So yeah, in no way would this be a suicide mission. Definitely I would want to do it. So there'd be no way that I'd sign up for that. Um, John, John Zanecki, when you, you, you look at the cost there, I mean, is, the, is the important factor here that as a species we need to look at planets elsewhere in terms of long-term survival? I mean, it's beginning to sound more like a sort of Superman uh, film, isn't it? You know, and the, the uh, destruction of Krypton. Yes, I, I wouldn't say, though, that's the prime motivation for exploring space. I mean, certainly one day life on Earth will get perhaps a little bit less comfortable and, and you know, we will be looking to colonise either interplanetary space or, or other bodies. But that's hopefully it's not going to be in, in the short term, but you know, it is a long term perspective. But I think we explore because that's in our nature. Um, we've always explored whether it's to, you know, to, to see what is over the next river or the next sea. Now it's to see what is beyond the next planet. It's, it's part of what makes us human. But there are also perhaps long-term benefits in terms of mining asteroids and, and, and things like that. Simon Foster, I mean, what do we know about what the conditions would be like for people once they, they got to Mars? I mean, it's not just radiation and, uh, and other issues like that, is it? Well, the problem is there's no atmosphere to breathe. So that's one of the situations you're going to be, if you want to go outside, as you can see on the uh, programme, you're going to have to be wearing a spacesuit. Not only that, you're going to be inside a kind of habitation zone as well, which is going to be quite cramped and small. So however long you're going to be there, it's going to be quite you know, problematic. The other problem is there is going to be radiation down on the surface as well, because there's, the atmosphere is a lot thinner and there's no real magnetic field on Mars as well. So all these particles, you know, our magnetic field around the Earth and the atmosphere protects us from the damaging radiation from the sun. There's no real protection from that on the Martian surface. So that's going to be a real problem. It's, it's not, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not a very hospitable place. It's exciting. A lot of interest at the moment, though, isn't there? There's that billionaire Dennis Tito who's so, putting together his own plan as well. Now, he's proposing sending a couple to Mars uh, for, what, a 600-day journey. Yeah. You're proposing three. So, so what's the advantage of sending three rather than two? Well, I, I don't know if you have an argument. I suppose at least there's <laughs> someone to arbitrate in between and something like that. I suppose it's also that you, you, I suppose a way of communicating between different people. I would say that you should send people with different languages because that way at least on the way you can learn a decent skill that you could, I don't know, learn Russian or Mandarin or something like that. At least you're doing something proactive on the journey. I think knowing someone, I think the idea is that a couple is that you've known each other all these years and you've managed to survive maybe 20, 30, 40 years of marriage. Hopefully you should be able to survive 500 days there and back sealed <laughs> in this kind of container. Well maybe the best time is to go at the start of the marriage rather than the Well, end. yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, and Professor uh, Zanecki, just a final thought from you. The time frame, I mean, practically, do, 
what, what do you think? I mean, President Obama is talking about uh, a NASA program to try and get uh, people on Mars by the 2030s. Do you think that is viable? It, it is absolutely viable. As I said earlier, there are no technological showstoppers. We, we can do it. Um, and and I, I would suggest that actually the cost, you know, um, Simon talked about six billion or nine million. Of course, to you and me, that's a lot of money. But in terms of, of, of global expenditure, it's not so much. And, and, and I think that this activity, when it happens, will probably happen on a global scale. So there'll be a lot of countries involved. So, as I said earlier, I think it's about the political um, uh, cooperation and, and is there the political um, uh, imperative to do this? We can do it technically, but can we do it organisationally? It sounds absolutely fascinating. Uh, Professor John Zanecki and Simon Foster from Imperial College, uh, best of luck. And uh, you can see uh, plenty more on the challenges of getting people to the Red Planet uh, in the documentary How to Put a Human on Mars. That is on Saturday at half past three here on BBC News.